Hi, my name is Tuche Tari Roth, and I'm the assistant director of the WPTA um, Amateur Piano Competition. And today I have Richard Payne as one of the competitors and participant of the competition. And I just want to start with hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, Richard, can you please tell me about yourself a little bit? Where are you from? How old you are? Sure. Yeah, I am um, living in Indiana. In the United States, and I am 30 years old. Okay. And um, did you play piano when you were young? I started playing probably when I was around 10 or so. I don't exactly remember. Um, at least that's when I started the first time. I started a little bit earlier than that, uh, but I complained so much to my parents that they let me quit after just one month of lessons. But and a few years later, when I was around 10 years old, I asked to take piano lessons and have been playing since then. Oh, very nice. And you have a teacher that you see regularly? Uh, I just barely started taking lessons again. Um, I had about a 10 year break without lessons, but I just started about two months ago. Okay, so. and you, you're already doing competitions after two months. Very nice. Well, uh, it was mostly to motivate me. So I've been playing for, for consistently for about the last six months just in for personal enjoyment and the competition was an opportunity to motivate me to <laughs> keep practicing during that first little bit of lessons. Yeah, I understand. Very nice. And um, I know that you work full time. What, what is a typical day for you? Sure. Yeah. So I, I wake up in the mornings. I will often do some exercise early in the morning, have breakfast you know, with my wife and kids, and then I will go and do a full day's work, come home, um, and then my wife will often teach a, a music lessons in the afternoon. So I'll watch the kids while she teaches music lessons. We'll have dinner, put the kids to bed. And that's when I have an opportunity to practice for an hour or so. Yeah. And then my wife and I spend the last hour of the evening together trying to relax. And then it starts all over again the next day. Yeah, so a pretty busy schedule, as I'm sure <laughs> most contestants are as well. Yeah. And your, your wife is also a piano teacher? Yeah, she teaches piano and voice. Yeah. Okay. Do you take lessons from your wife too? No, I do not actually. <laughs> She's very good, but uh, I do take from uh, from a professor at one of the local universities around here. Oh, okay, very nice. And in the competition, I know you're playing classical music. Is that the genre that you usually just play and practice at home? Or is it that you have to prepare different pieces just for the occasion? I typically play in the classical uh, classical realm, yes. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I mainly do classical music. That's why it's music to my ears now when I hear it. And yeah, why I do. do you love classical music? Yeah. Um, well, I really like classical music for a lot of reasons. I think um, I think the main one is just the the passion and just the, the, the depth of it, right? You hear a lot of pop songs and it's always the same chord progression and <laughs> usually nothing particularly interesting, but there's there's almost always a surprise, something interesting and exciting uh, that happens in the classical music. And so I'm really quite drawn to that. Yeah, I agree. I actually, I think a few months ago, I was explaining to somebody that um, the pop music is just progressions of five and one the whole time. And they just looked at me a little bit uh, puzzled, but <laughs> I told them it's such a simple thing that that's why I like classical music because it's also never ending, right? You can never be perfect at it you can never be fantastic at it you'll be very good always but there's always some challenge with any you know you can never end it and the advantage with the um, piano repertoire is that it's so based that you can spend your entire life learning the pieces but you will never be finished with it so to me that is in my case that is what really makes it exciting right yeah very much so and um, is there anything that you do to get yourself motivated or do, are you just a self-motivated person for exercise and for getting up in the morning? Are you one of those lucky people who are just self-motivated with everything that they do? <laughs> uh, do you I think I'm somewhere in the middle. I think that um, I think that I just enjoy a variety in life. I enjoy learning new things. And so um, if it's something that's an opportunity to learn, I usually... Um, I'm very interested in it. I mean, the last few years have been, have been quite busy with the, uh, you know, young kids and stuff like that. And so um, now I feel like I'm having a little bit more energy and a little bit more time to tackle it. So I've wanted to take lessons and, and play consistently for a lot of years, but it just hasn't been possible through school and 
and uh, starting new jobs and things like that. But finally at a place where I can do that. And what do you feel when you play the piano, when you practice? Um, it's almost therapeutic, I would say. There's something about the, the repetition and the expression that just kind of takes your mind off everything else because it takes so much concentration, at least when you're first learning. Mm -hmm. um, and then once you've learned a piece, you have an opportunity to just kind of let your mind wander while you play sometimes. And I think that the combination of those two is is just really, really good for me mentally and really enjoy it. Mm. Yes, it's actually an investment also for your mind. When you yeah. get older, you're not gonna forget <laughs> so much. Because exactly. It's really such a great brain training for people to play an instrument, especially piano, because you use both hands. Yeah. It's actually healthy for your brain. Yeah, absolutely. And the nice thing about the piano, too, is it's an instrument where you don't need other people, right? You know, you play the clarinet or the trumpet or something, and you usually need an accompanist or, or an ensemble. So piano is unique in that way in that you are your own accompanist while you play. So That's true. Do you also play other genres? Um, I played a little bit of jazz back in junior high school, and uh, but I don't play too much else other than classical you also perform for friends and family just to get yourself also uh, uh, used to performing in front of other people for example um i need to do more of that um i used to do that consistently when i was uh, in high school taking lessons before um my my teacher then always had me do what she called pre-performances mm -hmm. where <laughs> you would go and practice on a friend and, and something like that so I haven't had much of an opportunity to do that or the courage to do that yet with my friends. It's been it's been a while. I'm getting back into the swing of things. <laughs> yes, that's true. And right now we have, uh, we're in the lockdown, so we can't really invite people because we're a little right. isolated at the moment. Um, is there any places that you look online to also keep yourself motivated? Some people look on YouTube, for example, of videos of other pianists or... Facebook groups, or is there anything that your podcast, for example, is there anything that you do for yourself to keep motivated? Yeah, I, I do watch a lot of uh, YouTube videos. Um, I'm usually trying to discover new music and new pieces that I'm not familiar with. So I spend uh, quite a bit of time just putting on random uh, pianists or YouTube channels and just listening to what they're playing. Okay, very nice. Anything that you would like to ask a concert pianist? Yes, uh, all sorts of questions, but I'll try to, <laughs> I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I'm curious how, how you mentally prepare for a performance and then how you can consistently perform well, um, like handling nerves, things like that. I'm curious what suggestions or, or techniques you use to, to do that. Yes, when, if you ask me personally, um, when I was younger, much younger, I did not really get nervous but I, that's because I was young and I didn't know anything, much of anything, I think. And I just, I just had the young person's courage, I would say. Right. But as you get older and the time gets um, limited for you to practice uh, and, and the knowledge of wanting to do really well, otherwise, you know, the expectations of the world also changes when you're young, you do everything, everything oh, very, very well done, you're young or you're, you're doing very well. And also talent can also take you. Uh, long ways when you're young but after a certain age after you're an adult the expectations change also and then you can't get away with just talent you just you have to put in more effort and you have to um, um, it's, it's, it's different as we're an adult and um, what I do is that um, what happened is that after I was I became adult I started to get a little more nervous and um, then I researched how people deal with nervousness and I read a lot of books too. And then I, I didn't get too nervous that it was uncomfortable. It was it wasn't hindering me that much. I still had the courage to go out and play. And I would that was also exciting for me to share with other people. I always think about that. I just it's also sharing with other people. And uh, one of the things that I read was um, that uh, people never get rid of being nervous. They just take it along with it. So that's another thing that they say about fear. You, know, you never get rid of fear, but you take it along and you dance with it, sort of. So as long as it doesn't detrimentally start destroying you inside, uh, you can just, um, it's actually good to have to be a little bit nervous because um, it really means that you care. 
if you're not nervous at all, it means you just don't care about it. And then you shouldn't even play it. So it's actually just, first of all, see it as a positive thing. And secondly, take it and try to transform it into something else, which is instead of thinking, oh, they're going to listen to me, they're not really there for you, but they're there for the music. So if you can mm. imagine, ah, I'm there to actually connect them to a different dimension of the world and get them away from this world, from their worries and whatever they have in their in their day. I'm I have the mission, if you, if you can think that, um, that and it doesn't matter if you're a concert pianist or not, you can still think that and do that for other people. I have the mission to take them along to some place else that they haven't been the whole day. So it's sort of like a gift that you are trying to do for other people. If you can see it like that, then it's not about you, then you will not be so much nervous. It will be more about serving other people. And right. yesterday I did a recording in a concert hall and I don't like recording to the camera because it feels really dead. So um, what I did instead is that I imagine I was playing for somebody else I mean, the first times that I was doing with the video, I was imagining I was playing with, with for somebody that I, I knew personally. And it could be someone who was the janitor, or it doesn't matter who it is, but I was imagining I was playing for them and I, I was trying to get them to a different world. And afterwards, you get used to it. Experience is also important. Once you get used to it, then you, you start actually not even seeing the camera. Because now you're, you have to record for the competition. I mean, you already did the recording for the competition with the camera. So right. yeah, one of the ways to get rid of uh, nervousness about anything is also experience. I mean, you do it once and you do it again. Every time it's, gonna, it's just going to get better. And a lot of times we don't allow ourselves to, um, uh, to actually go through it we say oh this is the second time i should get better already no give yourself 10 times then or 15 times it will eventually get better so we're usually very hard on ourselves i'm also the same i all expect huge amount of things from myself in just one time first try and that's why i recognize it and then i ha i had to actually read and learn about these things to allow myself to say you know what this was the first time maybe on the 15th time it will be like this then once you once you cognitively know, then you can also start to allow and make things a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. Do you have any like uh, pre-performance routines that you do to kind of get in the mindset? Yeah, I love to do yoga beforehand. Uh, so, well, not long though, just 10, 15 minutes, either the day before I do 10, 15 minutes of yoga and just stretching. That makes me feel really good physically. When I physically feel good, then I also, I think, play better. Um, I realized a, a heavy meal does not work. Caffeine doesn't work. I, in the past, I did, uh, I used to drink coffee or tea before a performance and, and I didn't know any better. Then I think it was in my time where I was, um, uh, pregnant with my second child that I had to perform and I uh, then during my pregnancy I didn't really use caffeine then I realized actually I could focus a lot better than with coffee because the mind is calm so with coffee just just makes you really jittery a little bit then with the hands and everything you can't have so much you're not really so much in the present moment Coffee puts me more in the past and, pre and future, but not so much in the present moment. So once I realized that, I actually stopped taking coffee or any kind of caffeine before <laughs> playing. And um, I just drink water. And if it's a morning thing, so the recording, I had to do it in the morning yesterday. So I just, um, I actually didn't have time to br have breakfast. I had to leave very quickly. Um, and so I, I drank water. I had some raw uh, foods, like um, some fruits and cucumber and things like that and um, banana usually helps with nerves you can have a banana uh, but don't have anything heavy nothing too too salty too fatty too caffeine i mean you don't want to put stress to your body of anything it has to stay really clean as much as possible and mm. then try to breathe yeah <laughs> yeah yeah one final question how do you keep your hands warm <laughs> <laughs> my hands always seem to drain of blood and are cold as soon as I am about to step on a stage or perform. Oh, same, same with me. I'm always cold before I play. So 
until the last minute, I have gloves on, I have a coat on, I'm wearing sweaters, two, three sweaters. <laughs> and then afterwards, you know, yeah. But once you start playing after 15 minutes or so, you, you're not cold anymore. And I also uh, warm up my hands before I, I perform, um, an hour at least. To, to play and um, start a little slow. Depends on how cold it is. If it's winter and if it's really cold, then you may need a little more time for your muscles to, to warm up. And if it's summer, it's already hot, then you just need maybe 20 minutes or so. So, yeah. yeah. And then try not to think so much about it. Again, try to focus, because the more you think about yourself, the more your hands are gonna be cold. I know I experienced that too. Then think about um, the music and uh, just, having a connection with the others, because that's what we're really doing when we perform with others. That's, that's what it's about. It's not about us. It's not about you know, us being great or anything like that. <laughs> it's hoping that they can go somewhere else with you, along with you. And if you're not, um, if you yourself are not going somewhere else, then they cannot come along with you. So it should be almost like you're, you're losing physically. You forget about time and space and the, the fact that we're material, I mean, we're actually mostly energy, they say, but we're, um, if you can't just forget that you're a material being with hands, then it's easier to take them along to somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. Well, great, thank you. That's all very helpful advice. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem at all. Okay, so um, I think we're gonna end it now. And thank you so much for your time too. And thank you for, participating in the competition. I hope that um, everything goes well and uh, I wish you good luck with more competitions in the future, maybe. <laughs> Thank you much. So much. Thank you so much. It was very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too.